So uh, I, I, I think it's the most useful way to think about that would just be to think about what is the difference between a child and an adolescent? It's hormones, right? So going, going through puberty and, you know, it, if we're talking about the developmental stages, right? So everything from being, you know, a fertilized egg, a conceptus, all the way up into an adult, there's defined stages that are really just described stages. So it's stuff that we've said, well, this means you're at this stage and that means you're at that stage. Well, at a, at a certain point, um, a certain point of your childhood, you, you, you've reached this full sense of self. Like you've, re you've reached this whole, well, let me put it this way. The, probably the first six, nine, probably nine, I'd say probably the first nine years, it's all about cognitive development, right? So you think about a human, a human baby is one of the very few mammals on the planet that's born completely helpless and that has to have a parent take care of it. Take care of it. So the most important thing is for that animal to understand the world around it, right? And then to be able to navigate the world around it. And so this is like, this is why you want your kids to climb trees and fall down and break their arm. Like that's like, the, like they understand the concept of how the world works. So, so that's a part of it. But at the beginning, it's primarily about understanding human interaction. And it's understanding, you know, it, it's understanding the concept of eating and the concept of language and the concept of going to the bathroom, and the concept of normal socialization and all of that stuff. Um, it, it, it's all primarily cognitive. And then you actually start hitting this physical development. And again, you know, we're we're retro analyzing the way humans are, so like we can't ascribe cause and effect to it, but but uh, it's at, it's at least a reasonable intellectual argument to say that what adolescence is is getting ready for reproduction. So in order for you to reproduce, you have to have all of these hormones. And these hormones lead to reproductive capability, but they also lead to a lot of other things, namely your body growing a lot faster and body hair and things like that. Um, and then I, I, I guess by maybe random chance uh, or really smart evolution or creation or whatever you believe in, um, that also accelerates the brain development, the primarily the prefrontal cortex. So when you're when you're learning as a kid, you're learning how things work. You're not learning to predict how things work. You're not learning to you're not learning to think six months from now. You're not learning to think a year from now. You're thinking about if I put my finger in that light socket, like that's bad. If I put this food in my mouth, that's good. Like that's the type of stuff you're learning. Then as you get older and older and older, you start developing these executive functioning, this prefrontal cortex area. So you're becoming fertile. You're becoming a human that's capable of producing another human. So your brain needs to be better than the human that you're going to produce. And so you get this, this huge surge. And that's, uh, you know, the let's call it theoretical like that's the theoretical idea of of of, uh, of puberty um however what goes on during puberty because your brain's growing because your body's growing um because by and large you're probably challenging your body more because it's growing and it, because it's getting faster and stronger and more resilient you need a lot more repair, so you're challenging your immune system, your repair systems, and all of this stuff, and everything is sort of, you know, coalescing to like this really big drive that actually requires a lot more anabolic activity. And as we've covered in a dozen videos, and we'll cover in five dozen more videos, 99.9% .9 of all anabolic activity happens while you sleep. And that's why somebody in puberty needs, you know, at least 10 to 12 hours, very often 
12 to 14 hours would be ideal. Um, and if you ever had a teenager or ever been a teenager, you probably remember this ability to just, you know, uh, I think it's the French that has some word for sleep that means small death, you know, where you're, you're essentially just like, you you essentially die. Like, you just completely fall apart, and then you wake up later and you feel better. Um, and, and that's characteristic of puberty because it's such an intense anabolic activity. Um, and there isn't a whole lot of catabolic activity when you're a kid. When you're a kid, you don't have a lot of stress because you can't think into the future. <laughs> When you become an adolescent and your parents are trying to assure that you get into Stanford Law School when you're 12, like you might start developing some excess stress hormones, but essentially you don't think that far into the future. Stress hormones aren't that big of a deal. Stress hormones are the primary reason for catabolic activity. So you're really just trying to optimize anabolic activity. Grow your brain, repair your body, grow your body bigger and stronger, grow your sex organs and grow your fertility. Because let's face it, you know, a couple of hundred years ago, you know, a woman got married at 14 and had her first baby at 15 or 16, and that was all completely normal, and that's sort of evolutionarily how we're developed, and it's obviously not socially ideal for us now. Um, but that that period of, of growth, I mean, they, I could talk for hours about what's going on during that period of growth, um, but I... I I think it's easy just to say, your brain's growing, your body's growing, you're becoming reproductive. Uh, you need a lot of anabolic activity and very little catabolic activity. So the more you sleep, the more anabolic, the less you're awake, the less catabolic. So the ratio actually changes. If you think about it, um, I mean, I know as like a 16 year old boy, I gained 85 pounds in a year. I slept 14 hours a day. I was only awake 10 hours a day. Right? So I was, the ratio is completely opposite. Like it took, it took 14 hours of recovery for me to live 10 hours per day. Um, and that's simply a function of, of development. Um, it's pretty similar across other mammals that require a lot of sort of nurturing and, and uh, following and, and even some birds that require that. So uh, if you just think of it as like, if, if you think of what I try to talk about a lot is that sleep is the time when you're getting better, when you're getting stronger, when you're getting smarter, when you're remembering, like when you're forming a long a long-term memory out of something your parents taught you today that's going to save your life tomorrow, that memory is going to happen when you're asleep, when you're learning a skill that's going to allow you to hunt food to survive. Like, that, that's going to happen when you're asleep. And so it's just the most intensive learning period in our lives, and it's the most intensive growth period in our lives. And, and there's an uncountable number of hormonal and you know, physiologic changes during that.